Thanks for checking out the 2022 Enduro Bike Roundup. Today's review will be going over the Canfield Lithium. Welcome everybody. Today we've got a very fun and exciting bike to review. It is the Canfield Lithium, the 7075 aluminum enduro machine that uh, surprised the heck out of us, I must admit. It is a lot of fun and I think we're going to have fun talking about this thing today. Um, retail right i know we haven't talked a lot about prices on bikes because in the world today they are always changing and by the time brian gets done editing it seems <laughs> to have gone up a thousand bucks but today we're going to talk about price because right now this thing retails for six thousand and ninety nine dollars to get into it as six hundred starts at right yep um you do normally get a chain for that price but um <laughs> Sean wanted some jewelry today. So, uh, but that being said, I mean, an Olin's bike, Magura brakes, pretty solid wheel spec. Mm -hmm. Overall, like really impressive for a small brand to offer a bike with this kind of performance and package yeah. at 6,100 bucks. Yeah. So, um, so let's dive into the Geo first. Dario, you wanna talk about some key numbers on this thing here? Yeah. On our size large? Yes, this is a size large. Um, in the field of bikes we've got, this is about the most conservative in every aspect, except for one Geo number. Uh, it's got a 475 reach, which is like tied with shortest with a couple other bikes. The overall wheelbase is the shortest. The chain stays are 430, so pretty tight. Uh, bottom bracket drop, I think is 27 mil. So just shy of the 30 number, that's pretty consistent on a lot of the other bikes. 28 bottom right. 28, oh, yep, one off. you're off. And then uh, <laughs> it all counts. the head tube angle is 64.5, so the steepest of the group. But the one thing that does stand out, it has a pretty high stack. Uh, feels, because of that tight wheelbase, tight rear end, it kind of feels like you're riding a scooter almost <laughs> uh, in a fun way. Like it, it makes you want to just like whip it around and you're really upright so you can kind of pop off stuff and feel like you're you're still moving in the right direction um yeah six, the 644 stack is is definitely it's tall i like yeah. it the, the shortest chain stays in the group for is sure. also a big one yeah i think for me so i'm i'm the tallest of of those of us testing the bikes at six foot three at six foot three okay and this is the one that surprised me that i was able to ride it um a lot of the bikes like the fit is actually been pretty killer i prefer a small bike this one feels great like the high stack feels really good to me that high stack number almost matters more than the reach when you get into like a kind of little bike uh i don't love the short rear end it's it's fun because you're like you can really move it around and it you can enter corners blind pretty quickly but i found that for me being maybe a bit big for the bike i was just getting off the back more frequently than i was on some of the others uh, even though like this and the Cannondale share the same reach number, I found I was off the back on this a bit more. But overall, it, like the, the package that all of that Geo comes to is, is like upright, fun, really good for like jibbing on stuff. I like that feel. Yeah. Sean and I both really liked the short rear end. Mm -hmm. um, it, it felt a little wonky, like first hopping on it. Okay. After... 50 feet, I was like, okay, I got this now. Yeah. yeah. This is sick. The one, thing, yeah, once you get used to it, it it's okay. Yeah, so I, I would say that it's not the, the thing for everybody or everywhere. Um, what I really liked about the short rear end was that, um, you know, there's lots of little like up and overs and where you kind of would lose a lot of speed on mm -hmm. some of the longer bikes. For sure. With this, you could kind of give like a little bit of a jump and just shove the bike forward between your legs. Yeah. And because that back end is so short, you're getting that back tire over and pumping. Yeah. And I felt like I could accelerate this bike on every little root and backside and mound because I could just yeah. pick it up and just push that thing down and out in front of me. No doubt. And um, I, for that, I really liked that short rear end. You know, I guess I do really like going fast for me. You know, I like, uh, I'm not racing, but like I like to go fast and I didn't, really feel like the short rear end held me up a ton there were some stability you know thoughts but like yeah. the the really plush and supple mm -hmm. suspension i think made up for a lot of that yeah um and i i just 
God, I really liked this bike. Yeah, you were digging it. I think it's super fun as well. Yeah. Like the, like I guess to finish out geo stuff before moving on to suspension, like for me, if I was racing this bike, uh, like so I'm riding all these trails pretty much blind and like chasing you who knows these trails like the back of your hand, it, it's nice to be able to enter a corner that I don't, like I really don't know what's going on. Maybe it like, you know, squiggles around a little bit. This bike handles that quite well because you can kind of just like fishtail it through stuff quickly where some of the others, like you want to set up high, set up wide to like really get speed out of the corner. And I think if you were racing, like setting up high and wide is the way to get out of a corner faster. So I found I was leaving corners a little slower on this, but that doesn't mean you can't set up the right way for them. It just, because it's tight, like the wheelbase is shorter, it allows you to kind of like snap, tuck in there and yeah. snap through a corner. Yeah, which isn't always the fastest. No, but it is sometimes the most fun. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, Sean stood out for you? I mean, I just, I was having more fun on this bike. Yeah. Like I wasn't trying to go fast or anything. But yeah. I was just having fun, like popping over things and surprising just like no speed lifting, popping, yep. clearing things. I was like, this is it feels a like, lot of fun. It feels to me like the trail bikiest of okay. the test bikes. Yeah, and surprisingly low weight. Did we talk about the weight yet? Not yet. Uh, yeah, you'd think metal bike would be heavy, but right? it's not. 33 points. It's a tenth. 33.7, I think. Yeah, it yeah. is. I'm like a sealant amount of difference between that yeah. specialized Enduro, which is thousands of dollars more, and like carbon everything. So yeah. that is very impressive. And this is to like me. alloy wheels, alloy frame, yeah. alloy cockpit. Yeah. I I really like it. Yeah. like a lot it's high on my list and uh i know we're not at the grand finale yet so we'll reserve all that for, for then mystery. yeah <laughs> subscribe and stay tuned yeah. but um yeah man like i was impressed especially when i was setting the bike up at home in the garage like mm -hmm. i just kind of sat on the shock and i was like not excited I, it looked badass and i was like i can't wait to yeah. ride this and then i sat on it and i was like oh like it kind of feels a little junky it but yeah. As soon as I started riding it, that went away. So I don't know if it was like the new shock or the seals, but like just setting up sag or like the parking lot test, I would say don't judge this bike by that. Like yeah. don't just sit on it in, the, in a shop or at a friend's house and be like, oh, this doesn't feel that great. Because when you get it on the trail where it matters, yeah, that this thing, killer. it comes alive and yeah. it is a lot of fun. And uh, man, I, I really enjoyed it. For sure. And speaking to like the Olin suspension on it, which I haven't had a ton of time on yet, but I don't think any of us have really spent yeah, time on it. which will change. Um, <laughs> like this is one of those forks for me of a few now that don't really pass like a parking lot test, but as soon as they're on trail, it feels really good. Uh, I think the EXT era is similar to me and the new Lyric, where like all three, you kind of like, if you're squishing it around in the garage or even like hopping in the car park, it can feel like too damp or kind of like too slow. But then as soon as you're on trail, it like, it, it works amazingly well. Yeah. I, uh, I really like this fork. It's got like the twin air chamber set up so you can really finely adjust how much support it's got and how it bottoms out. At first we were running it super linear. I kind of liked that feel, but you would find the bottom on it pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And now we have it set up in like its stock, more progressive setting and it feels great. Like it, it yeah. pushes through nicely, but then you get like solid ramp up. I, I do think the shock needs more progression though. Personally. Agreed, yeah. I, I would love to add like some volume reducer yeah. to that rear shock and yeah. get it to be a little more progressive. But um, speaking of the rear shock and the rear end as a whole, this bike pedals very well, yeah. uh, surprisingly. And doesn't break. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, like I, I mean, I experimented with the high speed, you like the compression adjustment, yeah. but like I never felt like I really needed it. Like it wasn't bobbing or bouncing around for me very no. much at all. So <laughs> it's a really active shock. Yeah. Like that. That was the first thing I noticed on this bike was like first three turns in rock gardens. It, like you, you can feel the rear end just like, like flut fluttering through its travel, but it doesn't feel like vague or like wallowy. It just is moving a lot. Um, that's kind of Canfield's CBF balance formula thing. Uh, you know, they've got all the tech docs to read about that, but their whole thing is it's sag independent. So they don't, I mean, I guess you could like roughly say 30% is a good starting point, but I ran this bike initially at like 40, went down to 20, went back to 30. It feels really good everywhere. It pedals surprisingly well, no matter the sag. Um, I liked it on the stiffer end. 
just because I found the shock is a bit too linear for the frame. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed, yeah. But we, it was we, never a harsh bottom out. No, that's like true. Like we, we regularly, like the ring was yeah, like squished right now, like fully up there, but like we never felt bottom, like a harsh yeah. bottom. So um, yeah, we don't need much, but a no. little bit would be nice. Yeah, it's worth noting that like ours didn't come with volume spacers. We, we would test it. And I think if you were to get this bike, it should come with volume spacers. Yeah. But, um, other build spec stuff, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, there's other else. options and the, they got some more affordable ones, but I yeah. mean, gosh, there's... I like, I like what we're this not, comes with. We're not loving the TRP drivetrain stuff, I will say. No. Um, it's proven to be difficult. Yeah, we have obviously this and the Enduro. Uh, we've adjusted the clutch, yeah. I think, as tight as we can get it, but it just... The chain slaps a lot. I think that's what led to this chain break at that, and it's a, what is it? Y the YBN. Y YBN yeah. chain, but um, yeah, there's just a lot of chain slap. Like there's not any other bikes where like we're feeling the chain hitting us on the inside <laughs> right. of the leg, and yeah. both of the TRP bikes, that's happening, and, and chains are dropping, so. Yeah. All right, well, Canfield Lithium. Who's it for? Final, yeah, who's it for? Final, well, final thoughts. Um, I like this bike, it was super surprising. It's, it feels really different. I mean, I know that's kind of a, like a cop out, but it's just like, it, it feel, it's really cool that like, given we have eight bikes on test, a lot of the rear like suspension feel on most of the bikes is pretty similar. Like they have similar amounts of support, give or take. This just feels different. Like they're doing a completely different job of how the support works, how much the shock moves when you're riding down trail. And I really like that. The geometry overall for me is not the thing I would want to race on. Uh, maybe if I sized up, but even then, like the really short rear end isn't for me. Like for my ride style, I like to have like something in the back to push into a bit more. Maybe a steeper head angle would help. But overall, I think it's a killer bike. It's like, for me, they, maybe the perfect like long travel trail bike kind okay. of thing. All right, Sean? I give it two thumbs up. Okay. I'd like to spend more time pedaling it or climbing it, but downhill performances. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. Like the, the shortness. Yeah. yeah. It's it is a very so fun playful. bike, and it it erases a lot of chunk in my opinion, yeah. and I I like popping it and and getting downside and and pumping away. But yeah. uh, well, there is the Canfield Lithium, a very solid bike that our crew enjoyed quite a bit. So stay tuned again for that grand finale where we pit this up against the other seven bikes in our roundup. But uh, major props to Canfield. This thing mm -hmm. surprised all of us and is a yeah. lot of fun to ride. So thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys out on the trails. Mm -hmm.